All right, hi guys. So let's start uh, the recall of FMG. And right now we are going to discuss June 2022. Now this recall that we are going to discuss is one of the most authentic recall. And I would say that we have put a lot of time and effort from, you know, uh, collecting the data from the students usually. And it has taken a lot of time. And definitely you guys are going to enjoy this FMG June 2022 recall. So let us see the very first question that was asked in this, uh, you know, recall. A patient with glaucoma was suf also suffering from bronchial asthma. Now, in this June 2022, there were three questions that were related with the bronchial asthma. One is glaucoma with the bronchial asthma and his examiner is asking which of the following drugs should be avoided. Now, in the bronchial asthma patient, what we usually discuss that what should be avoided is always and always going to be non-selective beta blocker. Because non-selective beta blocker, they will be blocking beta 1, beta 2 and on the uh, lungs, we are having beta 2, right? This non-selective beta blocker, they are going to block beta 1. When they block beta 1, there will be decrease in the heart rate. But when they block beta 2 as well, what will happen? Lungs pay bronchial smooth muscle of the lungs, we are having a beta 2. And because of that, uh, beta 2 normally causes bronchodilatation. And because of the blockade of the beta 2, now there will be apparent bronchoconstriction. So any bronchoconstricting effect can uh, cause the problem. Therefore, a drug like Timolol, as I tell you, that in any general patient, especially in a country like ours, we prefer Timolol, right? Timolol is a non-selective beta blocker. It is a drug that can precipitate bronchial asthma, right? It can precipitate bronchial asthma. Pylocarpine is a M3 agonist. It's a myotic agent. Bitaxolol is a selective beta blocker. Selective beta blocker. It is considered as a preferred beta blocker. Preferred beta blocker. In bronchial asthma patient with open angle glaucoma. So, if there is a bronchial asthma patient with the open angle glaucoma, Timolol should not be used. Then examiner asks, okay, if it is not used, what are you going to use then? Then you can use Bitaxolol. The cardioselective beta blocker is the one that is having lesser effect on the lungs. Apraclonidine, Bremonidine, these are the alpha 2 agonist. They are the alpha 2 agonist. Remember, they are a sympatholytic drug and they will be decreasing the aqueous production. They are going to decrease the aqueous production and they are also going to increase the uvo scleral outflow. They are not associated with any bronchoconstricting like ADR. Huh? They are having some ADR like lid retraction and all, but they do not have bronchoconstricting. Timolol is the correct answer for this question. I hope all of you guys have got this. Let's see the next one. A 29-year-old lady who is a smoker on nicotine replacement therapy. All right. So she is a smoker. She is on nicotine replacement therapy for smoking de-addiction. She now requires an alternative therapy. So usually whenever there is a smoking dependence, whenever there is a smoking dependence, what we actually do, we always try to do NRT. NRT is nicotine replacement therapy. So we try to give nicotinic gum or nicotinic patch or nicotinic inhaler right nicotinic gum patch or inhaler will be giving so right now your patient is already taking nicotine replacement therapy alternatively if it's not responsive alternatively what you can use if it is non-responsive to this then we are going to give drug like your vereniclin we can give drug like your vereniclin or you can even give bupropion but out of this if you have to choose one vereniclin is the more effective drug that is having partial agonistic action at the nicotine receptor. Bupropion, it is considered as a preferred agent. Bupropion is a drug that we have. It is preferred in depressed patients. So, whenever there is history of depression with nicotine dependence or smoking dependence. Right? So, depression with depression with smoking dependence, in that it is the drug of choice. It is the drug of choice for nicotine dependence if there is a history of depression. Bupropion, it is a receptor modulator plus it is also having partial agonistic action at the nicotine. So, you can say Piona, Bupropion, Piona, you can easily remember. Right? Vereniclin, it is having nicotinic receptor pay partial agonist. Right? So, they try to keep the nicotinic receptor clean. You can just remember like this. Correct answer for this question is Vereniclin. Why not Flumazenil? Please remember, flumazenil that we have, it is the antidote for flumazenil. It is the antidote for benzodiazepines like, uh, you know, diazepam, hai na? benzodiazepine overdose ke liye antidote hai. A comproset, it is going to decrease the alcohol craving. 
Naltrexon actually is an opioid receptor antagonist. It's an opioid receptor antagonist and they are mainly utilized in treatment of opioid de-addiction. It is utilized in the treatment of opioid de-addiction therapy. And in opioid de-addiction therapy, we are going to use naltrexone. Remember, to prevent the relapse. The aim is to prevent the relapse. So, it has been asked previously as well. But another question examiner asked that what is the antidote of opioid overdose? So, opioid overdose ka antidote. What is the antidote of opioid overdose? The answer to this question will be naloxone. I hope uh, that there is no confusion here that naloxone definitely is one agent that we can utilize as an opioid antidote, opioid antidote and this was also asked in one of the very recent examination plus naltrexone is also one of the opioid antagonists. It is orally available and it is utilized uh, to prevent the relapse in, uh, relapse in the opioid de addiction after the methadone substitution therapy we are going to use naltrexone. Acamprosate is a drug that is going to decrease the alcohol craving. It is having an NMDA receptor blocking property. Flumazenil is the antidote for benzodiazepine poisoning or benzodiazepine overdose. So, varenicline is as the correct answer as I told you they are having partial agonistic action at the nicotinic receptor. The specific site is alpha 3 beta 4 and alpha 4 beta 2 right they are having the these are the specific sites that we have okay. Rest of the detail about nicotine I mean uh, varenicline has been given already here that when they uh, bind at the NN receptor the following outcome will be noted they inhibit competitively binding with the nicotine I mean you are going to give a drug varenicline they will partially you know stimulate the nicotine receptor and it is always said that when a full agonist and partial agonist are given this partial agonist will be acting as an antagonist i repeat when a full agonist and partial agonist are given together this partial agonist will have uh, chances also to bind and you are going to use varenicline ahead of time so this varenicline will occupy the site of nicotine and after this when the patient consumes cigarette or any uh, you know uh, uh, yes yeah, cigarette i would say when the patient or person consumes cigarette he will not have that level of euphoria so, it competitively inhibit binding of nicotine, decrease symptoms of nicotine withdrawal as well. Of course, withdrawal symptom could be come karega and it also blocks the dopaminergic stimulation responsible for the you know, reinforcement of the pleasure. The reward associated or the pleasure associated with the smoking that will also be reduced. Right? So, again, these are the important outcome after blocking, uh, blocking the N receptor. Next, again, on a second question on bronchial asthma, same year, same exam. A patient suffering from bronchial asthma comes to you in hospital. Which of the following drug are you, which of the all of the following drugs are used in the acute exacerbation? Except now, this is very very important. You have to see there is except all of the following can be used in acute exacerbation. Except please remember in acute exacerbation, what all agent that you can use? You can use beta two agonist drugs like your salbutamol, which is available by IV inhalational oral in every form. Zero form maybe it's available. Also, you can use drug like formoterol. Formoterol is a long-acting beta-2 agonist that and also it's a fast-acting. Definitely, you can uh, add, you know, uh, oxygen as well, steroid as well. In resistant or in status asthmaticus condition, non-responsive to beta-2 agonist steroid and oxygen, you can even add IV magnesium sulfate. Please remember IV magnesium sulfate, they are also having bronchodilating property. But given the scenario that we have, the examiner is giving an option leukotriene antagonist. Please remember leukotriene antagonist, drugs like your Montelukast, Zafirlukast, Montelukast, Zafirlukast, Pranlukast, they can be utilized for treatment of allergy, they can be utilized for the prophylaxis, right? for the treatment of allergy you can utilize, for the prophylaxis of bronchial asthma you can utilize, but it is not utilized in the acute attack, remember they are slow acting drug and again they are not available in the inhalational form as well, neither uh, uh, in the IV form. So, leukotriene receptor antagonist, they are the drug that is not used in the acute attack out of the given choices that we have, alright. D is the correct answer. A patient with bladder cancer on chemotherapy drug who is also a known case of CKD developed a tumor lysis syndrome. Somewhere or the other, I don't know, in NEET PG, INI, CD and FMG, this topic of uric acid, gout, tumor lysis syndrome is being asked from last three years in every examination. Okay? So, they have developed tumor lysis syndrome and having high level of uric acid. 
which of the following drug can provide the fastest reduction of uric acid fastest reduction of uric acid remember the name of the drug is rasburicase there is some you know this rasburicase and there is one more known as your p glotikase please remember rasburicase and p glotikase what are these these are the recombinant uricase these are the recombinant uricase that means they are recombinant drug derived from the urine and feces of the birds this recombinant uricase it causes uric acid ka breakdown to allantoin this uric acid breakdown to allantoin allantoin will be a water soluble metabolite that can easily be excreted normally we do not have this you know we don't have a uricase enzyme it is derived from the birds right so birds uh, urine you know? so we actually call it as a recombinant uricase you know? so uric acid ka uh, metabolism will be increased to allantoin so they are the fastest they are the fastest to reduce now can they uh, can allopurinol also reduce allopurinol will definitely reduce but again if it is asking fastest reduction in the tumor lysis syndrome that is going to be your raspberry case fabricostat they are the xanthine oxidase inhibitor allopurinol likewise they are the xanthine oxidase inhibitor both of them are xanthine oxidase inhibitor they are the drug of choice in chronic gout Manitol is an osmotic diuretic. Manitol has no role right now. However, in dialysis disequilibrium syndrome, definitely we can use manitol, right? Can be utilized in acute cerebral edema, in the treatment of increased intracranial pressure, increase in the intraocular pressure, and also can be utilized for the treatment of dialysis disequilibrium syndrome. Dialysis disequilibrium syndrome that I am discussing here has been asked previously also in one of the 2022 NEET PG examination. Okay, so correct answer for this question it is going to be uh, none other than your raspberry case, right? Among the given choices. Moving forward, again, the same information has been given it is a recombinant uricase and they are um, decreasing the uric acid more effectively than allopurinol. Okay, all right. A 28 year female with first trimester pregnancy comes to you in the hospital with a high level of T3 and T4. So, high level of T3, T4 means there is going to be hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism, and if it would be saying high level of TSH, then we would be saying hypothyroidism. But here there is a hyperthyroidism. An examiner is asking which of the following drug is most appropriate. So, there is a case of pregnancy. In the hyperthyroidism, you will be giving antithyroid drug. For the treatment of hyperthyroidism, you are going to use antithyroid drug and for the management in the first trimester of the pregnancy, you will be using propyl thiouracil, PTU propyl thiouracil, which is a thyroid peroxidase inhibitor, TP inhibitor, thyroid peroxidase inhibitor, that is in the first trimester. Then we are having second and third trimester. In this one, you can use methimazole or carbimazole, carbimazole or methimazole. Please do remember a very, very important thing that this methimazole or carbimazole, if it is exposed in the first trimester, right, if it is exposed in the first trimester, these are associated with a teratogenic effect known as your aplasia cutis, right, they are associated with teratogenic effect known as your aplasia cutis, coanal atresia, coanal and esophageal atresia. Esophageal atresia, hypothyroidism, right? These are the important problem that can be associated with this drug if exposed in the first trimester, right? If exposed in the if exposed in the first trimester, exposure in the first trimester. All right. So this will be about methimazole, carbimazole. In the second third trimester, yes, we can utilize once the organogenesis is done okay so carbimazole first trimester we use karenge propyl thyroxine is the preferred one potassium iodide again uh, is not the one that is going to be preferred propanolol is a non selective beta blocker and non selective beta blockers are not selected in pregnancy it is never given in pregnancy 